Hello, hello! Once again, I am Daniel, and on the beautiful island of Tenerife in Spain, and I'm here with a very, very, very special guest today. Her name is Lydia. Lydia? Hi, everyone. Hello. Would you like to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm Lydia from Slovakia. I have a website called languagementoring.com, and I help people learn languages the way that polyglots do. I also organized a, a big conference called Polyglot Gathering in Bratislava, so that's how I got to know uh, hundreds of polyglots, actually. And I like to adapt their ways of learning languages to other people out there. Yeah, so that's what we wanted to talk about today, is uh, the secrets that right. polyglots use to learn so many languages. So, uh, you're an interpreter. Yes, that a conference is interpreter. A conference interpreter. That sounds like one of the most difficult jobs. Yeah, well. <laughs> I've uh, I've never even attempted something like that. I've done translation like on paper, but that's real easy because you can sit down and think about it as long as you want. It's a bit tricky. Right. I can do it. And I Spanish. I I mean, I like how it sounds. El idioma. Eh, creo que por eso me, me gustó tanto aprenderlo mm -hmm. y me gusta mucho usarlo cuando viajo, por ejemplo, en América Latina. Es, esos ah. son mis países favoritos. Ok. ¿Cuál es tu país favorito para visitar, entonces? Ah, pues a mí me gustó mucho Colombia. Me gustó mucho México. Tengo mucha gente en Colombia y México viendo sí. eso ahora mismo. <risa> Saludos, Saludos a todos. Yeah. Uh, ¿Qué onda? México. Sí. Qué padre, ¿eh? Whatever. Yeah, whatever they say down there. Uh, ok, ¿y qué es lo que más te gusta de España? Ah, pues no he visitado mucho en España, solo un poquito ahora en Tenerife, claro, pero también un poco en Asturias, pero no mucho. Es que tengo más contacto con América Latina en realidad. Great. ¿Y uh, sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ya, yeah. ich habe Deutsch studiert. Ich bin Dolmetscherin von Beruf. Also, ya. Yeah. Très bien. Uh, how do you say this in French? <laughs> parlez, parlez uh, parlez-vous français? Parlez-vous, oh. of course, parlez-vous français. Est-ce que tu parles français? Oh. Est-ce que tu parles français? Ah, très bien, très bien. Oui, j'ai aussi appris le français. <laughs> Great. Uh, and what other languages? Um, so, we did not mention, well, English. <laughs> English? Polish, uh, Russian, Esperanto. Um, now I'm learning Swahili. And I also have the basics of uh, the Slovak Sign Language. Slovak Sign Language? Right. <laughs> okay, which has nothing to do with your, uh, your vocal apparatus. No, no, exactly. It's just for, it's, it was really interesting to learn that and, you know, get to understand a new culture. Great. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, that's about all. I didn't understand anything she said there, but um, I am not a polyglot. I am a bilingual guy, and then I know little bits of other languages. But I wanted to ask because I teach English on my website all the time, and I figure if somebody um, knows nine languages, like you do, that uh, they would be pretty good at, you know, picking up new things, and they probably have some secrets yeah, that they could do. share. So you have um, five things I think you're going to tell us, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, well, hit it. Okay, so basically I think the most important thing that uh, is really crucial to learning any language is to really want to learn it by yourself. So I think the mistake that most people do when they want to learn a language is just give the responsibility to someone else. So you want to kind of go for a course, you have a, you have a teacher and you want the teacher to teach you, right? I don't believe in teaching, I don't think that exists or is possible. And basically all the polyglots I know and all the languages I've learned uh, I've learned them by learning by myself. So this is my first advice, like you really should change your mindset from okay, I need to find someone who teaches me the language to how can I learn this by myself? I've been thinking that every day recently because yeah. um, I have so many people uh, who write to me saying like, teach me English. Yeah. And it's like... It's impossible. I would love to, but it doesn't really work that way. I, like, I tried it for 10 years. I, I taught yeah. in, you know, like language schools, companies, the yeah. university, and it's just not possible to teach anyone anything. I would love to just like wave my magic wand and teach someone something, but yeah, yeah it it's, work. the question is, you got to sit down and learn the stuff. That's right. Yeah. But it, we are getting to number two, which is good news actually, because language learning can be fun. And I think this is the thing that polyglots really know how to do. They try different methods, you know, they don't go for one method that someone tells them to, but instead they try to find something that they find interesting. Yeah. And when you make it fun, it's not like, oh, I'm learning this language, but it's actually a nice, you know, pastime activity. It's a great way to spend your time and you're doing something really useful. So, for example, I found out that 
uh, when I was learning Spanish, uh, I wanted to read something, but all these books were so boring, you know, all the materials, text. So instead, I found the, uh, the Spanish translation of Harry Potter, my mm. favorite book from the childhood, and oh. and an ebook and an audiobook at the same time. And every day I would listen to them and and read the book at the same time for 20 minutes. And this helped me enormously, really, like. Uh, at the beginning of the book, I barely ever understood anything. By the end of the book, I was almost reading it like in Slovak. So that was a great thing and it was fun for me. So that was a life-changing thing. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. I've been saying this for years too. Find something you like doing in the language, do that. Uh, when I started with Spanish, I was um, you know, conversing with the people who I worked with who were really fun guys. I was reading you know, poetry in Spanish because in those days I was really excited awesome. about poetry. Good. And uh, I was... I was reading in the Spanish newspapers about politics, which yeah. was something I was in politics and like world news. It's pretty news. high level. I mean, poetry and politics. Yeah. Well, okay. This is not may maybe when I was starting with Spanish, yeah. but but that, it's all, this is exactly what it is. I mean, you like it, so please do it. Yeah. But if you if you give the general advice to like, oh, you need to read about you know the newspapers or something. For most yeah. people, this is really boring. So I I wouldn't you know. Yeah. Um, and well, the fact that it was fun made it so I could spend you know half an hour trying to read yeah. one page yeah. it was like difficult but it was fun it was so fun. you yeah, do it exactly so that's that's the my tip number two actually make it fun anyway look for the method you like you really enjoy look for the materials you really love working with and it will be so much more easy you know so what's number three in your language learning secrets of polyglots yeah so I basically believe that uh, what polyglots do differently as well is that they spend a lot of time with the given language and they do a lot of these fun activities um, which is something many people don't realize if they sign up for a language course right like they go twice for a language lesson and mm. in a language school and then they think that's it like maybe they do a homework like for five minutes ten minutes and they usually do it you know like five minutes before the next lesson because the teacher will check or whatever I'm and guilty I've done that yeah everybody's done that yeah. but it's because I mean it's because how these courses are said uh, they really make you believe that if you sign up for that course and you do the little homework that's all you need to do hmm. but it's, it just doesn't work like that so what I tell people is you need to like if you find a book you like read it all you know read the whole book if you listen to a podcast and listen to all the episodes, if you find a series that you like, listen to all the episodes of that series, right? And these are the things that will get you so much input, and so much practice, of course, by speaking, etc., that is necessary for learning a language well. I like that you use um, the words like input and output. Yeah. That I, well, uh, input being just like, I would call it like stimulus or something in that language. Yeah. You know, material in that language. You're, there's a lot of information in a language yeah. and the more time you spend in contact with it the better oh. you're gonna do like many people actually think that I have a perfect memory for remembering words or something but the truth is my, my secret is that I just get exposed to it more often mm. right so if I read a book on Harry Potter you know these most important words will be repeated there every time many many times and that's how I learn them I'm actually not very good if you tell me a new random word now in a language I don't speak I will not be able to say it to tomorrow Okay, so you don't have a perfect memory, you've just... No, no, I just expose myself to the language in a fun way a lot. So hmm. really spending a lot of time with languages is to totally crucial. Great. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the methods that promise people they're going to learn a language in two weeks or... Four, Forget it. Four weeks. Oh, or yeah, it's, it's a perfect marketing technique, you know, it works amazingly. People buy courses, you know, like crazy, but it's it's really impossible. It just and breaks my heart. Um, like, I think of what my <sighs> bank balance would look like if I just started telling people learn English in two weeks. Yeah. And it would be like, that would be the easiest thing to sell. I mean, it's for me, it's actually quite simple. It's like, if someone tells you that and promises you that, then ask them how many languages they've learned. I mean, if they really need two weeks for that, they should be like super polyglots like yeah. right now, right? They normally haven't learned any foreign language at all. So um, for me, it's really, I mean, if you look at the people who actually have learned a lot of languages, uh, polyglots, right? Yeah. I think that's the best example. And how do they do it and how much time do they take? It takes me two years to learn a language to a level where I'm comfortable using it. <sighs> There's a guy here in Spain who's a memory champion. We don't need to name him. Yeah. But he has uh, claimed that he learned German in an hour and 40 minutes on wow, his flight to Germany. Oh, that's beautiful, and I want to speak German to him then, you know? I really, yeah. really would love to do that. Yeah, his, his method is learn English in a week, and uh, I've looked all over the internet for videos of this guy actually speaking English. I cannot find anything, so... They, these people never prove anything. They can't. I mean, yeah. even you, you can even do a certificate in a, like three months, two months or something. I mean, you can 
kind of fake it, you know, you can yeah. learn something fluently and say a few impressive sentences in a perfect pronunciation. Everybody's like, wow, you speak the language. But for me to speak a language means I can have a conversation with anyone about anything that I like, you know, yeah. I'm interested in. I want to read a book in the language, which I do often in all my languages. I want to watch a film without subtitles. This is the level I'm aiming at. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Um, so that was number... Three. Three. So what's number four? Number four is using effective methods. And this basically is also quite related to the usual traditional school method, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, for example, learning vocabulary for a test tomorrow, right? So I mm. put it in a book and I try to re read it out loud many times and I kind of cram it into my short-term memory. Mm. And then I think I, I had it because, you know, I got an A, so I learned the vocabulary, which doesn't work clearly. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've noticed that polyglots use a lot, a lot of methods which are long-term memory. So that means, uh, for example, space repetition system using flashcards. You know, I pref pref personally love the gold list method for uh, gold writing. list method. method. Yes, I just heard about this from you yesterday. I will yeah. look it up and yeah, I will, it's, it's a I will beautiful tell method. you all about it yeah, very soon. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Okay. And for example, also this uh, reading and listening at the same time, the shadowing technique. You know, there's a lot of techniques which are really use effective, but mostly people don't know about them because they are not taught at school. I have a couple of books about. Uh, well, a couple of books with texts that I also read, and so you can read and listen at the same time. Yeah, it's I think it's a good method. Yeah. Uh, could you explain shadowing a little bit? Sure. Shadowing basically means you're listening to someone, for example, on a podcast or a TV series, and you're shadowing, that means you're repeating exactly what the speaker is saying, and you're imitating it yeah. as much as possible with the melody, intonation, whatever. And this is a very good practice for your pronunciation, but also improves your listening skills in general and speaking skills. Basically, this enables you to speak before you actually have content to speak you know so you you practice your muscles your speech organs which are getting used to right used to pronouncing these new things because every new language has new sounds which you yeah. need to learn and this yeah it's really useful it's quite difficult I mean you need to know how to do it not do too much of it at once but it's pretty pretty useful cool yeah so what's number five yeah so number five is um, creating a system in your learning and this is really important because if you're learning by yourself then you know, you, you maybe don't have the discipline to do everything every day, etc. So you need some kind of plan. Like you need to tell yourself, okay, I'm going to listen to this podcast every day. I'll listen to the 10 minute episode. Yeah. Right? If you don't say that and you say like, oh, from now on I start learning, you're super excited, motivated. But then one week later you go like, oh, I didn't really have time today, you know, maybe for reading and listening at the same time. It's like, oh, well, when I have time, I'll do that. That's a very dangerous thing to say. When, when I, I have, have time. time. Oh, you know, man. Yeah. When I have time is the death of someone any good plans. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So instead, if you make a plan like, okay, I put this book on my bedside table and I will read two pages every night before going to sleep. It's so simple to do, right? Yeah. And you have a system there which you can easily apply. And it's even better if you can maybe create a little chart where you actually tick something off, you know, like, okay, yeah. I did this and I see how many days I've, I've been doing it. So, you know, that's, if you create this system, then language learning becomes a part of your day. Yeah. These little habits doesn't cost you any energy at all. Yeah. I always tell people that it's, that you have to design the game so that you can win easily. Yeah. Like, um, rather than doing the thing where it's like, I'm going to study eight hours this weekend or whatever, exactly. I'm going oh, to study all day. You do that, you know, maybe once and then you're tired and yeah. you are bored with the language. It's like, no, don't do it. Just, you know, Small stuff. do you think something like 10 minutes a day is useful? 10 minutes a day is a great start for sure. Yeah. I personally recommend half an hour to mm. one hour a day if you want to make um, progress, which is very visible within a few weeks. Yeah. Like I've experienced with my clients, if they start learning for half an hour to one hour a day, yeah. really within even one month, they tell me like, wow, if after so much listening, I've yeah. improved incredibly. Yeah, I think, um, I think you're right. I think that 10 minutes a day is way better than nothing. Yeah, and so I definitely. encourage That's people start. to start as small as you need yes. to start. If, if totally. it's five minutes, do five minutes. Yeah. Just try to make a you know long sequence of days when you've been improving. Yeah. By the time you've done five minutes, you might just want to do 10 minutes. Exactly. This is what usually happens, right? Yeah. Like you actually find out, it's actually quite fun. Why don't I do it for, uh, for another 15 minutes? And, yeah. and then you, fi you find yourself doing it for half an hour a day yeah. you know, with these activities you like and you don't even know how. I do the same thing with uh, exercise actually, as mm -hmm. if I'm working out. And if I, if I don't feel like working out, I'm just, I give myself permission to say, all right, I'm going to work out for five minutes. That's and good. then if I want to quit, 
I'll quit. And uh, generally what happens is... You don't want to quit. Yeah, after, after I have warmed up a little bit, uh -huh. I feel like I want to do the whole workout. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like giving yourself mental permission to do mm. something small rather than having a big, ambiguous... Absolutely. Uh, big, ambiguous goals kill so many people's ambitions, yeah. too. It's like... Yeah, if it's too ambitious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ambi I, I love the idea of ambitious goals, but in my mind, the, the best thing that works for me is just like, what can I do today? Or hopefully, what can I do, you know, yeah. today before lunch, in the next hour? Yeah, right now. Yeah, and yeah. Have, have, have some result that you can be yeah. proud of, and that is usually the most motivating factor. Absolutely. Mm. Okay, so number five is create a system, create sort of a routine yeah. to help you uh, learn more every day, advance yeah. towards your goal every day. So you don't have to decide every day whether you feel like doing it or not. It's already decided. <laughs> yeah, this is a tricky question, you know? Yeah. It actually, this is the mental energy that it yeah. costs you. If you go like, well, I will read the book when I have time, then every day you need to decide, do I have time today? Do I feel like reading? If you have the plan, you just follow it. It doesn't take any energy. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I don't feel like it is another one of these sentences that I just don't like hearing because yeah. there's so many things in life that it's like whether or not you feel like it is the least relevant. Well, you know. I mean, you need to ask yourself why you are doing this, why you want to learn the language. Yeah. If the motivation is good, yeah. if, you, if you really want to learn the language and need it, then you can, with a plan you can easily do that. <laughs> okay, so uh, we are filming this in April 2018 and you have a big announcement coming up. Yeah, actually a very good announcement for everyone who would like to learn the way polyglots do and maybe follow my advice and my, my tips and tricks. Um, I'm launching my course, which will have the best know-how of, um, of learning languages that I used in learning seven languages bluntly, mm -hmm. and uh, that thousands of people have used in Slovakia successfully, and I'm going to launch it in English soon. Beautiful. So, so up till now, all of your courses have been in Slovakian? Yes. Or Slo mm -hmm. Slovak, sorry. Slovak. Slovak. And uh, you're going to be finally launching courses in English so that yeah. the uh, wider world... And I, I kind of make... Uh, so people who have these courses can then join my uh, two-month challenges mm -hmm. where they can learn the language by themselves but with my help. This is my position as a language mentor. Language really, mentor, not I, language teacher. Exactly. Because you must learn the language yourself. That's right. And I make sure that people actually keep their plans. Like, we have a beautiful system to check, um, you know, an accountability sheet, and motivational quotes, a beautiful community group. Like, it's really, really effective. So if you feel like learning a language, you know, maybe using these methods, then feel free to give it a try. Um, if I understand correctly, you don't give a lot of actual material material in language. You give general I give, advice. I give I give links. So yeah. if you're learning one of the European languages, then mm -hmm. I will have a lot of resources for you that you can use. Okay. But then you pick the resources that you want and and apply it in the methods that. Okay. And if I wanted to learn something non-European, if I wanted to learn Korean or something. I would tell you I'm no expert in that. I don't have any experience with Asian languages, but I've had people in my courses learning Japanese, you know, Chinese, etc. And they, they did pretty good progress because the methods actually apply to any language. I'm just, I will, I mean, I can always find materials asking my polyglot friends. So Beautiful. Um, so your website, once again, is? Is languagementoring.com. Languagementoring.com. And if you want to meet Lydia in person, you could probably do it at the Polyglot Gathering. That's right. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge Polyglot event uh, coming up in Bratislava at the end of May, beginning of June. This is 2018, so if you're watching this in five years, things might have changed. But yeah. is there a website for that? Yeah, polyglotbratislava.com. Polyglotbratislava.com. Or even polyglotgathering.com. This will redirect you to ours anyway. Great. I was at the Polyglot, Polyglot Gathering in Berlin two years ago. I think this was before you were involved. Yeah. Exactly. But it was a lot of fun. And uh, I would highly recommend, if you are into languages in a serious way, that you should check that out. And you don't need to be a polyglot, okay? There is no limit of languages you need to speak. Many people get yeah. scared of the name polyglot. I, I was worried because I speak, you know, two and a half languages, and I was worried that people were going to laugh at me for not being a real polyglot. No, no, no one laughs. They're all decision. they're all very nice people. Yeah, they'll, they'll tell you <laughs> they'll tell you about their seven languages, and nobody yeah. nobody it's is like worried. It's like really no problem. And basically, the idea is if you like learning languages, then you're the perfect person for the polyglot gathering. Great. So languagementoring.com polyglotgathering.com yes and uh, as usual my websites they're all over all over the place uh, madridingles.net expatmadrid.com etc well thank you Lydia for being on the show it was a pleasure the show and uh, not much else until next time I am Daniel and 
you know, greetings from beautiful Tenerife. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Bye.